Hi, this is Dave Rasnick. It's probably not possible to escape all the hoopla about genes. Genes for this, genes for that, good genes, bad genes, cancer genes, and so on. One of the results from the various genome projects, which analyze each and every gene, is that humans and mice both have 20,000 genes, give or take a few. That's very interesting, but what should have made headlines around the world is that 99% of mouse and human genes are the same. Think about that for a moment. That's a pretty profound result. Molecular biologists, which includes the bulk of cancer researchers these days, are obsessed with discovering this or that gene or group of genes responsible for this or that cancer. Others search for the intelligence gene, the genes that determine whether a person is gay or straight, the specific genes responsible for each and every characteristic people care about. You get the idea. The simple fact that mice and humans both have the same genes should have destroyed the idea that there are specific genes for everything. Clearly, the 20,000 genes shared by mice and humans don't decide to make a mouse today and a human tomorrow. Genes simply do not determine who and what we are. So what are the genes? What do they do? The genome, which is just a collection of all the genes, is simply a biological dictionary. The Oxford English Dictionary, or OED for short, is a convenient analogy that captures the concept of the genome. The current print version of the OED comprises 23 volumes containing over 600,000 words. Conveniently for my purposes, the human genome divides its 20,000 genes into 23 volumes called chromosomes. The mouse genome divides the same 20,000 genes into 20 chromosomes, not the 23 as in humans. The words in the Oxford English Dictionary are the functional elements of everything ever written in English, whether literary, scholarly, technical, or popular. The genes are the functional elements of biology. You cannot derive the Declaration of Independence, a PhD thesis on plate tectonics, a Beatles song, a love letter, or my book from the OED, no matter how long and meticulously you inspect it word by word. Likewise, it is not possible to derive either a mouse, a human, or cancer by inspecting each and every one of the 20,000 genes. While all species share genes from the same biological dictionary, the karyotype, or how the genes are arranged, is unique for each species. Human cells have two sets of 23 chromosomes. One set is contributed by the mother, the other by the father, for a total complement of 46 chromosomes. Mouse cell cells have two sets of 20 chromosomes for a total of 40 chromosomes. Since normal human and mouse cells have pairs of identical chromosomes, their karyotypes are balanced. If the karyotype of normal cells becomes unbalanced for any reason, problems may arise, the most of, uh, severe of which is cancer. My new book talks about what happens when the chromosomes of cells become unbalanced.